Here's the language analysis. Tissue by MGS Darker. Paper that lets the light shine through. This is what could alter things. Paper thin by age or touching. So tissue itself is an extended metaphor throughout the poem. It refers to paper, of course, um, you know, the paper of pages of the Quran, for example, are referenced, um, but also skin, the things that make us up and the color of one's skin as well, and the you know, ideas associated with that, but also, you know, the idea of maps and landscape, which is also written on, which are also written on um, paper. These borders are artificially drawn. Um, but the whole poem is a suggestion of how mankind is both fragile and powerful, just as paper can hold these great ideas, um, but ultimately can be torn in two as well. Um, can also be a metaphor for intimacy as well, so, you know, skin, of course, when you touch somebody's skin, it's a very intimate act, and, um, and also poetry and ideas. Poetry is written on paper, and poetry can be a pretty powerful, transformative um, force. The light shines through, so obviously light symbolizes goodness, it could symbolize God by extension, um, but cities block this, you know, these man-made capitalist structures, um, blotting out the light. Um, however, the sun will always shine and will always find ways to shine through, and that shows the power of nature as well, and symbolizes hope, of course. So darker is suggesting that there can be a brighter path for mankind if we merely recognize our shortcomings and act upon them. Alter um, is what can alter things, so um, obviously it's a homophone for alter, as in, um, you know, in a church, for example. And so there's deliberately a religious semantic field, um, semantic language, sorry, there's deliberately religious language that's being used here, perhaps for the sense of relatability. Remember, it's implied that the audience is white, and so you're using an image of an altar here and then talking about the Quran a little bit later on. It's tying those two ideas together. It's making it seem more relatable, that there isn't so much of a distance. Um, it shows God's power as well, uh, perhaps, and alter things uh, could reference the greater aim of the poem, which is to alter perspectives. And then touching, um, so this is referencing maybe something that we all have in common. It's finding common ground, like holding hands instead of forcing people apart and building up barriers. We're supposed to get in touch with each other. The kind you find in well-used books, the back of the Quran, where a hand is written in the names and histories, who was born to whom. Direct address, of course, you for um, added an added sense of intimacy. It's a very, you know, it's supposed to be a poem of warmth. Um, making us more susceptible to the message as well. The Quran, uh, it's made to seem sort of similar to the Bible here. This is also a tradition that people have in the Bible, writing in the names and so forth. So again, Dark is saying, look, you and I, or rather Muslim people and Christian people, um, are not too dissimilar. Um, and we should look for that common ground instead of finding differences and building up prejudices. Hand. Um, so rather than saying handwriting, um, Dark was drawing attention to this common human element, you know, the actual physical hand, which is writing in the book. Um, but also, this, this hand is sort of divorced from the body. And so maybe Art Darker is drawing on the wider idea of how um, some people are divorced from their personal histories because of conflict over identity um, as a result of wider prejudices in society, perhaps a couple of interpretations you can get out of that. Has written the names and histories who was born to whom. So talking about personal histories here, but also how you know people who say leave their original country, they begin to lose sight of their roots of their original identity. Darker herself is sort of writing an experience here. She moved from Pakistan to the United Kingdom and maybe she's commenting on that slight sense of loss as well and how one has to work a little bit harder to get in touch with who one really is. The height and weight, who died where and how, on which sepia date, pages smoothed and stroked and turned transparent with attention. Again, a reference to intimacy here, smoothed and stroked, linking to the idea of touching before. Turn transparent with attention. So transparent means seeing through something. 
And so in this case, it's applied through or past one's skin, one's skin color to you know, the deeper person within, which is what really matters. So there's um, a priority here of uh, equality over competition. And um, uh, the focus also disappears when you know something's transparent it's not obvious it's, you're not you're no longer looking at that transparent thing you're looking past it and so the mind is taken up with wider things and wider issues because you've looked beyond that which is now irrelevant in this case cultural differences perhaps um so this is an implied appeal to a white audience um saying that color, color is irrelevant if buildings were paper, I might feel their drift, see how easily they fall away on a sigh, a shift in the direction of the wind. So buildings were paper. So buildings appear permanent, um, but they are simply transient. They will fall. They, they, will, they, they will not last forever as strong as they might seem. And that could be a metaphor for, you know, the superficial capitalist um, society as well perhaps um, which has its priorities not always in the right place it may also be a possible allusion to the twin towers which obviously was destroyed and which were destroyed in a terrorist attack um, and strange though it may seem um, again there is transit it has a great effect of course but you know it's just one event in the vast history it should not define muslim culture or, or views towards muslims it's not representative terrorists are not representative of the whole as I have there. So um, a better understanding is achieved through paper than through buildings. In through paper, we can really write down our thoughts and it's a better representation of humanity. So family, identity, personal history, rather than buildings. Um, that, that is more permanent, that is more lasting. That's what really matters. Um, as you can see, you know, it's like in the Bible, like in the Quran, in the back of the Quran, where all those names, they still stand, they're still there. Um, drift and shift, you've got internal rhyme here, um, so obviously there's an emphasis on these two words, so this ties in with the theme of transience, how everything, all will pass, save for our shared histories and beliefs are you know, constantly growing and evolving civilization built upon those who came before, we're always striving for something um, better, more cohesive, more whole. Maps too, the sun shines through their borderlines, the marks that rivers make, roads, rail tracks, mountain folds. So maps, of course, a couple of interpretations here. Um, maps are an example of man trying to assert power over nature. Maps are an artificial construct. They, the, the borders only exist because we believe in them. Um, and as such, it's fragile. Um, it's not as power, powerful as nature itself. Secondly, the poem itself acts as a map, it acts as dark as um, a map towards a better future. She's showing us the way forward, paving the path towards greater um, equality and cohesion and ultimately happiness, I suppose. The sun shines through their borderlines. Um, basically, she's saying that borders are an illusion. Um, I have three interpretations here. Firstly, it's uh, representative of the power of nature. You've got nature breaking through man-made power. You can link to Ozymandias here as well. Um, it shows how um, mankind and humanity and the things that we create and draw up and so forth and the boundaries that we enforce. Um, all of those things are fragile and easily destroyed. Man has no lasting power over nature in the end. Secondly, it could also be a political point. Though governments may have differences, people ultimately remain the same. Borders will disappear if we look for similarities. You can link that to the idea of transparency, which we've had before. We have far more common ground if we look for it than we have differences. We're all humans. We all you know, have the same feelings. And um, lastly, the sun may symbolize God as well, if you bring in that religious reference to and hope may be found in, in God and how different religions are just paths towards the same, th different paths rather, towards the same thing, different paths up the same mountain to enlightenment as it were. Rivers make roads, as the commas shouldn't be there, comma shouldn't be there rather, rivers make roads, rail tracks, mountain folds. So real divisions, uh, the real division, divisions here uh, are man-made. So you know the roads and the rail tracks, um, 
rather than, than the natural one. So if this is representative of how um, prejudice should collapse and fall away. The listing here suggests tight control um, uh, with the sejora representing barriers. However, all this is undermined by the main message in the poem, which is represented by the enjambment elsewhere and how freely it all flows. So this sudden restrictive listing here, this sticks out because it's, it doesn't feel natural. And that's Starker's point, she's saying, these barriers aren't natural. We should tear them down and, and find common ground instead. I'll pause here and then carry on the last little bit in the next video.